I know it really has been just difficult the last few weeks for a lot of people. I find it really difficult. So I'm just going to share a little bit about um, how God's really helped me um, over the last few weeks. So um, I think I reached a bit of a brick wall with lockdown a few weeks ago. I was just really, really struggling. I just felt really down. I just felt rubbish. I just missed all my family and friends who I hadn't seen for months. I was just really frustrated. And I was moaning to Josh. I said, I'm just so angry. Like, I just can't. I just nothing seems to be fixing it and he said why don't you just pray about it because I'm very good at praying for other people but I, sometimes I find it hard to pray for myself so I did pray about it um and then the next day we had our Monday morning prayer um meeting which I love and I find it so helpful and Alan was um leading that morning and he just really spoke to me because he was talking about fruits of the spirit and I thought oh, okay that's something I'm really lacking particularly patience and self-control I thought, oh, okay, that's something I think God is trying to say to me. So if you just need to pray and you need to have faith in me that you'll get through it. And it really was just for me. I thought I can't do it by myself. That was like the click in my head that said, you know, well, I might not be able to get through these next few weeks. But actually, God is saying to me, if you speak to me, I can help you through it. So I went away from that prayer meeting feeling great. So thank you all for that. Um, and then the same day, um, I posted a message on our Wednesday um, evening group. I said, guys, can somebody send me some podcasts? Because I just need like to, to listen to some podcasts. Um, and I had some lovely things through. Mark sent me a 10 minute um, podcast from Andy and Mike, um, the guys who were, um, who were authors of the book we're all reading. And funny enough, the podcast that day was on the Fruits of the Spirit as well. Um, so I think that was just God saying to me, you know, really just if you ask, ask me for anything and I will give it to you so you know that encouragement for me was just amazing um and that was about three weeks ago and since then I just feel I just feel so much better you know it was I felt rubbish but I thought okay God can get me through anything I can't do it by myself but God really spoke to me through my lovely church family and I just felt so much better so yeah that was really encouraging for me yeah so um Mark asked to talk asked us to talk about this thought of it being okay not to be okay and I don't know about you but I don't like admitting weakness I, if there's a problem sometimes it's easier just to brush it on the carpet and just carry on with a smile on your face um so I was thinking what is the positive we can take out of not being okay um and actually our weaknesses can make us more approachable um I think you know if you talk about people and they just like to connect they like to have a moan it's much easier to talk to someone about what's going on in life um, if it's not going well. And especially during this pandemic, um, people don't want to hear how good our lives are at the moment. We bond <laughs> over how bad it is and how rubbish it is. So, you know, there's this assumption that as Christians, we all lead this perfect life from the outside. And I think that can scare people off. You know, it makes us more approachable if we're not perfect and things are going wrong. And you know what, like Sof said, there's no shame in asking God for help. Nothing is too insignificant. And that's something I really struggle with. Um, Gareth shared how he found his mobile phone eventually after praying for God. And it is as silly as those little things. You know, you look and look, and then you turn to God, and then you find it. Um, so personally, like the past couple of weeks, because I've had some problems with my rib. Um, and honestly, I didn't want to bother God with it. Like Soph said, I'm, I'm really good at praying for other people. I can do that, no problem. But when it comes to myself, it's like I don't want to waste this time and that's just such a weird way to think about it and I don't know if anyone else feels that way but um you know especially when there are such big things going on in the world like why should I be wasting his time praying for my little rib um and we do go to we go to God as like a last resort and it, it shouldn't be that way so yeah we, we prayed about my rib I was very reluctant and it was almost like it's as almost as like you, when you want to admit you're wrong to someone and you're just like you just don't want to say the words you just so yeah, I, I did pray for my rib and I really did struggle with that, but I did feel a lot better afterwards. And I did experience some physical healing, but I think there's a lot more spiritual healing in having that connection with God, in speaking to him about those little things. I felt that I like reestablished the relationship that I kind of lost over the pandemic. So um, I just want to end by sharing Psalm 28 verse 7, which says, um, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart, my heart trusts in him and he helps me. I think it's that simple. You know, we've got we've got God who we can turn to, and we've also got our church family and friends. So, you know, don't be afraid if you have any problems to, you know, bring it up in the WhatsApp group or 
if you're part of a midweek group or just you know reach out to someone privately in the church who you feel you can confide in because we are all one family we're all in it together thanks thank you josh and sophie so start with a very simple question um i think it's been asked already once this morning uh how are you doing how are you all you know and when i ask that question to people I get sort of answers like, okay, not too bad, thanks. Could be worse. Can't complain. And I even remember, I can't remember who it was. I was trying to think the other day, somebody who used to say to me, fair to middling. Um, I don't know what your answer is this morning. And one for Mason, when we lived in the States, um, I got very used to the standard greeting being, hi, how are you? which was always the way that people greet you in the States. Um, and uh, being English, I used to start by saying, oh, well, you know, actually I'm doing okay, thank you very much. And I soon realized, because the person who'd asked me the question already moved on, that there is only one standard answer in the States. When somebody says, hi, how are you? You're just supposed to say, good, and off you go. And I used to think that, I wonder what would happen if, if once I said, oh, well, thank you for asking. Actually, you know, I'm really struggling at the moment, but um, it's really good. And I, I never had the courage to actually do that. But, you know, that's, that's what you just say. You just say, good, and move on. And, you know, as Christians, we can fall into that same thought process. That when somebody says to you, how are you doing? You've got to always say, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm great. You know, everything's okay. Thank you very much. You know, um, we get told that we're living in victory. So, you know, everything's got to be okay. And in fact, those of you who remember the last time we led uh, one of these services, we had a celebration service and we celebrated the fact that through this COVID situation, we can be victorious. But honestly, as a number of people have been sharing this morning, quite a lot of us are feeling pretty down about where we are again. Um, so was that thing two or three weeks ago, just what we've said, an optimistic, blind, uh, put on a face, we're going to be victorious through this? Um, and now we're sitting here a few weeks later going, oh, actually, that, that's not the way it is. Actually, the truth is that we do have that victory we can be victorious through this whole COVID crisis. But as with many things with God and Christianity, that victory comes in a way that we don't expect or imagine. See, the Bible tells us that our victory comes when we acknowledge that we're weak. It's when we acknowledge that we can't get through this on our own. The Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, uh, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. See, I love the fact the Bible is real. It acknowledges that we all have weaknesses. We all have times where we can feel weak and hopeless. Gav's got it tattooed on his arm for those of you who can see Gav. Um, you know, the Bible acknowledges that. And if you go to Psalms, which we all think of as a book of celebration and a book of worship, very early on in Psalms, in fact, in Psalm 6, David writes this, I'm tired of all this, so tired. Gosh, how, how does that ring true today? My bed has been floating 40 days and nights. On the flood of my tears, my mattress is soaked, soggy with tears. The sockets of my eyes are blows, nearly blind, I squint and grope. See, God expects us and recognises that sometimes we don't feel okay. You know, for those of you who are social media people like me, you know, young and trendy, um, you know, there's the hashtag out there which says it's okay to not be okay. And that's what God's saying to us this morning. Folks, it's okay 
not to be okay. So I'll ask you again, how are you doing? You know, we're two days into another lockdown. We're facing an uncertain four months ahead. You know, I'm a glass half full person and even I'm finding that my glass is leaking. And I was even thinking to myself the other day, gosh, I wish we could just fast forward through the next four months and emerge in April, May. Just get through these next four months. See, honestly, if we're truthful, the situation can easily feel really hopeless. And that feeling of hopelessness robs us of three things. It robs us of our peace. It robs us of our identity and it robs us of our purpose. So how is your peace right now? You turn on the news and the stories are all about infection rates and our numbers. We can fear for our family, our friends and even ourselves. You know, I'm a sailor and it feels like those calm waters that I love sailing in are all stirred up by the wind and the waves. Nothing's calm anymore. How is your peace? I'm sure and I know a lot of us are feeling not very peaceful at the moment. Hopelessness robs us of our peace. How is your identity? Do you feel like that's been robbed of you through this as well? You know, if your identity comes through what you do for a living. You know, you might say, I'm an accountant, I'm a project manager, I'm a teacher, I'm a, that's who I am. This is, this is who I am. You know, and furlough, and even for some redundancy, is robbing you of that identity of who you are and who you were. Or maybe you're a mother or a father struggling to keep family life going. You used to have it all sorted. You were that efficient person that just ran the day like a well-oiled machine. And suddenly that well-oiled machine is rattling and struggling. How's your identity? Who are you today? And your purpose, you know, you can feel like you've lost your purpose through all this. You know, maybe your purpose was tied up in looking forward to the weekend and going out with your mates to the rugby or the football. And we all know that's not on the agenda at the moment. Maybe you found purpose in going into work every day, socialising with your work colleagues, chatting about the latest episode of Strictly or Bake Off or whatever is your favourite thing and you found purpose and meaning in work relationships. And now you're sitting at home doing everything over Zoom. Or you're an extrovert and you got your energy and your mojo from meeting lots of people, doing stuff together, all out there, having fun, being together. And you find yourself drained of energy now because you haven't got that boost. You know, there's youth workers on here who spend a lot of time used to out with the teenagers and with the kids, having fun together, having a laugh together. And again, that's now all Zoom. So how are you feeling today about your purpose in life? As I said, the Bible tells us it's okay to not be okay. But it also tells us it's not okay to stay not okay. It's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to stay not okay. See, Romans, again, Paul writes, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We may feel hopeless today, but we have a God of hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. And then listen to this. It's not so we can have a bit of hope. It says you may overflow with hope. 
How would you like to overflow with hope today? How would you like to have a peace that passes all understanding? Because that's what the Bible tells us God can do for us through his Holy Spirit. He can give us a peace in the midst of situations where humanly we feel miserable and could feel like no peace at all. But through God's Holy Spirit living within us, he can give us a peace in the midst of the darkest of places. Your identity, the Bible tells us as a Christian, is not caught up in what you do, but it's caught up in who you are. See, God tells us that we're his sons and daughters. He calls us his friends. We're told that we're loved by God. So today, if you're feeling you don't know who you are anymore through this, turn back to what God's word says about you. You are loved by him. You are his child. You are his friend. And he has a purpose for you, even in the midst of this COVID situation. Even in the middle of lockdown, he has a purpose for you. If today you're feeling you have no purpose, can I suggest that you just spend some time quietly with him, invite the Holy Spirit to speak to you and say, Lord, reveal your purpose to me in the midst of this lockdown. So again, folks, let me make it clear for the avoidance of any doubt today. The Bible tells us it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to acknowledge, as Sophie and Josh shared and Kate shared earlier, that we're weak at times. But the Bible says it's out of that weakness that God can step in and strengthen us. His power can flow in and through us through the Holy Spirit living within us. And that was Josh and Sophie's testimony. And Mother Teresa said this, and I never thought I'd in the same sentence be talking about Josh and Teresa and Mother and Josh and Sophie and Mother Teresa, but there you go. So listen to Mother Teresa, someone what they all think of, I think the world would generally acknowledge as being an amazing person. She once said this, I don't think there is anyone who needs God's help and grace as much as I do. Sometimes I feel so helpless and weak. I think that is why God uses me, because I cannot depend on my own strength. I rely on him 24 hours a day. If the day had more hours, then I would need his help and grace during those as well. There you go, she said. I think that is why God uses me, because I feel so helpless and weak. So finally, the reason God strengthens us is not just for our survival. That's great, of course. But I believe he also, as I've said, survives, helps us survive and strengthens us for a purpose. So we can go out and support and bless others who are also struggling. So they can experience God's love and compassion as we've experienced his love and compassion. Those who are reading Everyday Supernatural, uh, in chapter three, we read this. If God delights to use the weak, then it means he delights to use you and he delights to use us. God wants to pour his treasure in your cracked pot. He wants to use you even when you feel broken, weak, vulnerable, fearful and confused to bring him glory. So God is calling you. And maybe your purpose through this COVID is to find other people you can support as God pours his peace and identity and purpose into you to help others to find that too. So I'll leave you with this thought for today. This is what I believe God's word for each of us is today. It's okay not to be okay. However, turn to me to find your peace, identity, and purpose through the Holy Spirit living within each of you. I will make you strong. Lean on me, lean on your church family and friends who are there to support you. Then support and encourage others 
as I have supported you. You're not just to survive this. I have a role and a purpose for you, even in this. Letting go of everything, go dream. I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changed.